It's not, um, it's not lagging? No, it's not lagging. Oh. <laughs> I just hit the live button, so we are live. Hi. <laughs> All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining uh, the Product Angle Show on today's episode. I'm actually pretty excited because we have something completely different, never done before. Um, you know, last week we had Sergio on and he mentioned uh, a few of the roadmap items for Get Maker Log. And today we have a world first exclusive here where Fabio is going to introduce to the world live for the first time ever launching on the Product Angle Show. So I'm super excited. Um, so welcome, Fabio, and thank you for doing this. Thank you so much for having me here. Excellent. So I, I really want to jump into your product, but I'm I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to hold off and <laughs> let's go through a few other things. So firstly, you know, I love what you do. And, you know, we, we're both from the same part of the world. And we met mm -hmm. last time when I was in England, where I, I think it was what, 2019, the summer of 2019, I think it was, right? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. So I met you in London. And I think what you're doing is awesome. But for the people who don't know you, Tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, so yeah, my name is Fabio, like you said, <laughs> uh, and I'm a flight attendant for a big company in uh, Europe. Um, we fly outside Europe as well, um, like Turkey and uh, Egypt and etc. Uh, been doing that for six years, um, okay. and I've been learning how to code on my free time for the last four years. Um, so it. I always wanted to be a flight attendant. Um, I did a tourism degree in Portugal in university, uh, and that was kind of like a dream. And um, I always wanted to do something related with computers. I wasn't entirely sure why, uh, or entirely sure what. Um, I had that dream of working in games just because I was massive into gaming. Um, but yeah, uh, you know. Math is hard, and I was like, okay, I probably won't be able to get the job uh, in uh, coding, so I will maybe do being a flight attendant. So yeah, I, I followed that path, and um, I just I realized that um, math isn't an impediment, and I was learning math and um, trying to get my head into the right mindset that uh, I can learn coding, and I've been doing a few. Um, contributions to open source and learning on my free time. So I was lucky enough that my job allows me to have a lot of time off. So usually we have minimum three, well, not minimum, uh, minimum is two days, but most of the times we have three days off, uh, four days off, five days off. It depends how busy your month is. Yeah. Uh, and we do have a lot of time off um, for leave. And um, yeah, it, it allowed me to get back into that next step of learning how to code. Um, because yeah, the idea is maybe in the future do something related to code uh, and become a full-time developer. Got it. I mean, if you work crazy hours from what you know, <laughs> our, our pr previous discussions. You sometimes have yeah. to work late. You have to wake up early, depending on what the schedule is. So how are you finding time to, to code? Because you're, you know, sometimes you might have a really early flight, or you come back to your home late at night. How are you finding that time in between, or do you set time on your days off to exclusively code? Uh, so every month is different, and I'm lucky enough that my roster is usually quite stable, uh, unless it's summertime where there's a lot of flights happening and um, things can get a little bit chaotic. Um, we also have um, standbys, which are you are, can be called to do a flight. And if you're doing it from home, uh, the standby, you have one hour and 30 to go to, to the airport. And if you are in the airport, you can also be on standby, but you have to be there and ready to go in the like, last minute. And um, I tend to use the, that time to code or to read or to do something related to code. Uh, with shift work is always a little bit tricky because there's times where I have to go to bed at 6 p.m. because I have to get up at half two in the morning to yeah. do uh, 14 hours a day. The good thing about that is that I can finish a day around 1 p.m. so I can have a quick power nap and then use that time until I have to go to bed to do something, uh, whatever that is. So instead of going for 
a run or just stay in the sofa, uh, yeah. I decided to just do that and code. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. So now you're originally from Portugal. Mm -hmm. um, you're living in England. How yes. has that transition been? Um, you know, living in a Portugal environment, the culture, now you're in England. And the first thing that I get asked all the time is the weather sucks in England. <laughs> right. <laughs> You, you, you know, it's funny that you say that because everybody says or everybody has this idea that uh, the weather in UK is so bad. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case, actually. Oh, I um, like it. Yeah, it's uh, what, before I came to UK, I put in my head, OK, I won't ever see the sun ever again. It's going to be raining. It's going to be awful. Uh -huh. And then I, I got to the UK and I was like, well, it's, it's not like that. <laughs> it's oh. um, OK, the winter might be a little bit uh, longer, but comparing yeah. to Portugal, um, we have proper spring, we have proper autumn, and I love autumn. In yeah. Portugal, we either have very hot or rain, miserable, and uh, some people, they'd say that it's odd, because in Portugal, the winter, it just pours from morning till night. Okay. Uh, and it's always very windy and cold. The floods are not ready for the cold. So the winter in the UK, it's much better. <laughs> so, yeah. I hear you. Now, tell us something that we cannot Google about you. Oh, there's, I don't know, there's a lot of things that I could probably say. Um, uh, that maybe my first trip ever was to, on a plane, was to Brazil. So we never done any sort of small trip on a plane. Uh, okay. My parents always thought that, uh, we should know Portugal better, so we know Portugal from bottom to the top. And um, we have family in Brazil, in São Paulo. Okay. So my mom decided to take me when I was 13 years old uh, on uh, almost nine hours uh, flight to Brazil. Yeah. Um, we didn't even know if we were scared of flying. And I think kind of that's why I wanted to be a flight attendant, because I love the experience so much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that could be one, one thing that you can Google about me. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Now, when you started to want to learn to code, a lot of a lot of times I've heard new coders are asking the question, what language should I learn, right? And that's one of the most mm -hmm. common questions that a lot of people ask. How did you decide what language you should learn? Just take us through that pro thought process. So funny enough, the first ever thing that I've learned was Java. Okay. And I don't know Java. <laughs> so the very first thing I've come across was how to build a simple hello world in Java. Okay. Um, I got a, a book online that was um, teaching introduction to um, Java or something on those lines. And that's what I did first because I had a friend. She went to um, a university in Portugal and she was learning uh, computer science. And uh, I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. So I would like to learn that. Um, and Java is hard. <laughs> and then uh, I, I got a, um, a job and I got um, into university as well. So I was studying and working at the same time. And that time kind of, um, I just didn't have time to dedicate to programming. And from there, I kind of always in my head that I would really love to go back and learn how to code. Yeah. Um, so then before I came to UK, I I finished my, my studies and I was still working full time as an um, insurance salesman. Um, and I took that time to maybe go back to coding and I started with Python, uh, mostly because there was a code academy and uh, that was the first thing I've come across again. I was doing all the courses on code academy. So it was JavaScript, uh, Python, and um, I believe it was Ruby at the time. Um, that I think they only had these three courses. And um, yeah, I started with Python and I just enjoyed coding in Python. It kind of ring to me. And uh, that was the first language that I learned properly. From Code Academy, I did a introduction to computer science with Python from MIT X, uh, okay. which was a very, very, very hard course. Uh, but we had a really nice uh, study group, and we used to spend uh, full nights awake working together to try to solve the, the challenges. And um, I think that's what really made me passionate about coding. Excellent. Now, 
you, as you code, you've obviously practiced coding and built other things. What gave you the idea to build this new product that we're going to talk about? What is it called? So the, this product that we're going to talk about is called Thumbs Up News. Um, and the reason why I got that idea was the, the whole, um, why I came up with this um, website or this project was when the whole virus situation was happening. Yeah. My wife was reading uh, news constantly and she was going mental with all the bad news and um, et cetera. And I told her, look, we need to try to ban you from just getting some bad news. We need yeah. to looking at something that is good. Yeah. And then kind of had like this light bulb moment. I was like, you know what? I could make something like that. Because I, in one of my experiences uh, with uh, NLTK, I, I've uh, learned how to create a classifier, a tweet classifier to get a positive or a negative tweet. Uh, and I said, I could probably use that and get the data from um, news publishers and just run the classifier and see if a news article is positive or negative, ditch the negative and get the positive ones on the website. Um, and then I was like, well, if it's positive news, why not thumbs up news? And that's that's why the name came. <laughs> I like that. That's amazing. Can we see a, a, a screen share of it? Yeah, sure. Uh, let, give me just one second. OK, tell me when to add you in here. Yep. All right. OK. Uh, so this is the site that I've built. Uh, I did this website, I would say, 85% on my Twitch stream. Okay. Um, this is just the front end. Uh, the back end is um, using Django. OK. And the front end is served by Next.js. Uh, I never worked with Django, and I never worked with um, Next.js, so that was a really good experience. The website is pretty minimal. Um, I didn't want to use any pictures, even though I'm scraping data from RSS feeds, um, yeah. and th there is pictures included in some um, articles, others not. But I didn't want to get the use those pictures because I don't have the rights for it. Um, so I just thought, get something with some color uh, and just get the information that you need. So the headline, description, where is it from? And uh, that's that's it. So this, um, these colors, they also change. If you refresh the page, you get uh, new colors. Uh, you get the, co the categories here. Yeah. And then if you click on one, you will go to the article link straight away got it what's so the, the front end is yeah sorry no, no, no go ahead i was just gonna ask you what's the um the url oh uh yeah uh, the url is uh, thumbsupnews.net uh, okay sorry yep go ahead um i kind of lost what i was wanted to say <laughs> Uh, anyway, the, this uh, this project was uh, very interesting to build because uh, I've used, uh, other than the classifier, I used um, a lot of new technology that I haven't done before. And um, I'm serving the, this website through DigitalOcean. And um, I'm using Docker and Docker Compose and Nginx to serve the website. There's a few things that I would like to still improve on the, the website itself. Uh, I'm having a bit of an issue with SSL support. Uh, I just can't seem to get my head around how to implement that. But yeah, the project is rather simple, but effective, I would say. <laughs> Definitely. I, I like the, the simplicity. And basically, you have all the, the different um the categories on the left hand side you can click them and read this news based on what you want to read and it is positive so it's it's you're getting rid of all that crap that's out there that you don't need to read how mm -hmm. do you how do you i guess determine if it's positive versus negative uh so like i said i used um the library um 
the uh, NLTK library written in Python. Okay. Um, and I've trained a classifier using the naive base um, algorithm. Uh, so I'm using a bag of words approach. And I my classifier is running at 81% accuracy. So it's not 100% accurate. But I would say it does a good job so far. Uh, I've also go through every day just to check if there's any false positives and try to remove those false positives. Um, the idea is to do it automatically without having to to do it um, every single every single day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, this is kind of like a bag of word approach, so that's we get a massive data set, and um, each uh, data set is. Um, tagged with positive or negative. Uh, and then the classifier will run and will check if a sentence has a positive or a negative um, sort of mood, let's say. Got it. That makes sense. That's super amazing. Thank you so much. No hey, worries. Congratulations on the on the launch. I'm so I'm <laughs> super excited you did it here. Yeah, uh, I hope that um, People will enjoy the website as well. Um, I would like to have some sort of counter on every article to get some, like more popular articles. But I would say this yeah. is kind of the MVP version, um, and then see if if it's something that people like. Then maybe I will spend more time on it. I did a full months working on this project, so okay. I'm kind of on that stage that I need kind of a break as well from it. <laughs> um, so so yeah. Yeah, fair enough. So, what you know, you know, obviously you're going to iterate on it. But what does the future look like? You know, are you using it as a learning experience um, mm -hmm. to learn the code, how to code, and you know how to put out a product, or is there any monetization plans um, for this? So, for this particular project, there's no monetization because okay. um, if you really think about it, the only value that the project has is a classifier that got trained. Um, but he also got trained with data sets got from uh, Kaggle. Yeah. All the resources, all the technology that I'm using, everything that I've built is on the About page on the website. And okay. there is also a public repository of this website. The only thing that I haven't included is the classifier, mostly because it's very big and I didn't want to put it on um, GitHub. But yeah, it's, it's a completely free and it's something that I use to learn how to use Docker, how to use Django, um, Next.js, and uh, how to deploy a, sort of a full um, project from uh, DigitalOcean. Definitely. It's, it sounds exciting. I mean, so you've, you've gone through that phase of learning, you know, deciding which language you want to quote, uh, code, mm -hmm. actually learning to code, and then developing a product that you can put out there and show people. So there's there's going to be tons of lessons that you've learned along the ways. Talk about some of the you know the pros and the cons. You know, I'm sure there's days when you felt yes, it just worked, <laughs> things clicked, and you know there'll be days when you know you're trying to figure out something. Maybe the SSL you quite haven't quite cracked how to get it done. Um, and just talk us through that ups and down process of mm -hmm. you know you've got that idea now you're slowly building. Uh, definitely. Uh, I mean, I spent about four full days trying to get my head around Docker. And um, the only way I was able to get my head around it and actually make things work, it's also because, in a way, I wasn't really building this product on my own. Yeah. Uh, I'm part of an online community, which is called Party Corgi. Okay. And um, there is a lot of awesome um, developers, uh, content creators. It's a um, content creator um, inclusive community. And um, there are a lot of um, talented developers. Uh, one of them is uh, Robert Tails, and he helped me a lot with Docker. And okay. um, <laughs> I started by asking him, uh, oh, can you just give me a quick question here. I, I'll show you my code and see if there is uh, anything that I can, uh, like, if you can point me out the right way. And we spent uh, about almost two hours wow. trying to figure out why the Docker bit wasn't working. And then it kind of 
we we figured it out together. So it's it's a learning experience, but I haven't done it by myself. I had a lot of people around me to give me a hand. Um, but yes, there has been always that um, up and down, like you said, of yeah. something is going amazing and I love coding and then something goes bad and it's like, I hate coding and say, oh, now it's working, so I love coding. Um, yeah. I would say a lot of times, and this is what I've learned mostly is we get so motivated and so excited to build something that we kind of avoid reading too much or spending too much time reading documentation. And the main thing I've learned is if you do spend, even if it's one hour, reading the documentation, you're probably not going to save a lot of time. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's the same thing with uh, fixing IKEA furniture, right? Who reads the, yeah. uh, <laughs> the instructions and the manuals? But if you do, you save a lot of time, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> but obviously, coding and furniture is different. It just reminds me of that because, um, you know, growing up, nobody in my family liked to read um, instruction manuals. But some reason, mm -hmm. I did. And when you do, you start realizing it, it gets built quicker. As yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can just join this to this, and it should be fine. Yep, <laughs> exactly. So I do realize it's different, but for some reason, um, that's what came to mind when you mentioned documentation. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say to somebody who's starting to maybe code, thinking about putting out a product, but not mm -hmm. sure where to start? Uh, you know, what would you say to them based on, you know, the last six months to a year that you've, uh, you know, co been, co you know, you've been coding for four years, you said, yep. but what would you say to somebody who's at that beginning phase thinking about, okay, what language should I code? You know, I want to build products, but I don't know how, what kind of information would you, or, you know, guidance would you give them? This is a very good uh, question, uh, even because I'm still learning and progressing through this uh, whole becoming a full-time developer. Uh, I did mention that a few times on my uh, stream when um, people ask me some sort sort of the same question. Yeah, I would say the most important bit is try different languages. Just go with whatever you you fancy, learn, and see which one rings to you. Yeah. When you find that one language that you really enjoy coding in, spend a good amount of time using that language. So, try, so I would say probably not jumping around too much. So learning one very well, because then when you go to another one, it will be easier and things will start getting, um, make more sense to you because you can start thinking, oh, I know that in this language, I've... I would do something like this, so I'm going to try the same way. It might not be the best way to do it, but it's um, it's definitely something that um, you could you could kind of like have a, an idea what you could do with it. Um, I I started with Python. I always wanted to learn React. Then I started learning React about uh, a year ago uh, with Gatsby which I, I always say if someone would like to learn React, Gatsby is probably the best resource out there because the documentation is great. There's a lot of batteries included, so you can really get into React by um, following and creating a website yeah. in Gatsby. Uh, so yeah, choose one language. Um, start doing a lot of tutorials. And then when you start feeling comfortable, uh, after you finish one tutorial, try to do the, the same project or the same uh, thing that you've learned in the tutorial, but without looking at the tutorial. Because then you will see where uh, you you did understand something and um, what you understood well. So then you can come back to it and uh, try to relearn. Uh, and that could be a way as well for you to avoid being stuck in tutorials. Because I, I found that um, I was doing a lot of tutorials and code, uh, code challenges, yeah. but I it took me about two years, three years even, I think, yeah, three years since uh, I decided to start doing products because I didn't feel that I was ready for it and I didn't even know where to start. So if you have an idea for a project, write all of these ideas down yeah, uh, and start trying to um, do the tutorials, but also then do the whatever you've done on your own. And then you can start 
putting pieces together and say, okay, so this is how you start in this uh, in this um, tutorial, and the other one explains something else, and then you start putting all these pieces together, and then it kind of gives you a, a, an idea how you can um, build a product or a project. Um, oh, definitely. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, where can we find you online? I know here's your Twitter. I'm going to put your Twitter out mm -hmm. here. Um, is it the same handle for across all networks? Or? Uh, unfortunately, there is someone else called Fabio Rosado on Twitter, so I had to put the underscore. Um, okay. Without the underscore, you can find me pretty much everywhere. On Twitch, I'm called the Flying Dev because uh, I believe Fabio Rosado was taken as well. Okay. <laughs> um, and this was a, sort of a, a joke. Uh, I'm part of MakerLog as well. Uh, you had Sergio on the on the show, yeah. and um, yeah. that was a joke with uh, Diana. And um, we we were joking around one day uh, and saying that uh, yeah, I want to be a developer, but I'm flying and etc. So it's kind of hard. And she's like, oh, so you are flying, and so you want to be a developer? You can be a flying developer. So that I really enjoyed that. So I created a a website called uh, the flying De uh, the flying dot dev um, where I wanted to write kind of like my experiences uh, and I kind of put that on hold um, but now that I'm streaming more and I'm doing more I, I would say more interesting things I probably I'm gonna get back to it and start reviving that website as well uh, but yeah Fabio Rosado or the flying dev on Twitch thank you so much man Fabio, thank you so much for sharing uh, Thumbs Up News with us. I'm super excited that you did today, and all the best to your future projects as well. Um, hopefully, things settle down so you can get back up in the skies, because I think we're all kind of getting cabin fever and can't wait to get back <laughs> out there. Um, yeah. Before we um, head out, is there anything you'd like to say uh, before we end the stream? No, I would say uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it was quicker than I expected, to be honest. <laughs> so it was uh, it was good. And um, yeah, if you if you'd like to ask me any questions or um, just if you would like um, any help with something, uh, maybe I could give you a hand with something uh, code related. So yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right, thanks, Fabio.